All right, two for one, two in one day. By request, one more two-dimensional collision problem. Now, the nice thing about this one is we're going to be able to fully leverage our knowledge of trig and velocity as a vector and momentum as a vector to avoid some tricky math. So let's get into this one real quick. Hockey puck moves at a certain speed, 0.41 meters per second, collides with another puck at rest. The pucks have equal mass. That's going to be important. The first puck is deflected at 35 degrees to the right and moves off. This is going to be our V final for puck number one. Uh, and then it says, find the speed and direction of the second puck. So it's asking us what is VF of uh, puck number two after the collision. All right, so we've set up this problem. Now the whole thing about to the right, to the left, since they use that idea, I'm going to draw this dotted line. That you'll often see this referred to in textbooks as the, the normal. Uh, the 90 degree mark if you will and this is our mass one and it said it had a velocity of 0.41 uh, meters per second and it says the mass one is just the mass of m because everything has equal mass the two masses have equal mass in this problem it says that that comes in and hits this puck so this is our before picture now remember with momentum it's always about momentum before equals momentum after or should i say the total momentum before in a particular direction equals the total momentum in a particular direction after all right so this is our before picture right here and before this happens of course there would be zero momentum here in this puck because that puck has a velocity of zero the puck is at rest initially um, so let's look at the after picture because then we can start to set things up if we look at what's going on after the collision, it says that this puck that was coming in is uh, now deflected off to the right at a 37 degree angle. All right, so I'll draw its velocity in such a manner. And uh, it says its final velocity is 0 0.340 meters per second. Again, its m is, m1 is some m, and to be consistent, I'll label this v final one over there. Now, of course, if this guy comes in, what's really reality, in reality here is what's happening is it's going to be hitting, like, not the center, but kind of the, the bottom right portion of that puck. And so, of course, this one's going to be deflected off to the left. And so I'll draw this with some unknown angle theta. And this guy has a certain unknown velocity. So we don't know the velocity. We don't know the angle. We don't even know the mass. Uh, but we do know that total momentum in the x before is equal to total momentum in the x after. Total momentum in the y direction before the collision has to be equal to the total momentum in the y direction after the collision. Whew, it's a mouthful. All right, so before here, we'll call this our x-axis, this is our y. Of course, our sigma p x initial would be zero. Of course, all this funky Greek and stuff means uh, that the total momentum in the x direction initially uh, is zero. There is no momentum in the uh, x direction initially. Uh, it's a little different when we say total momentum in the y direction initially. Uh, however, since this puck is at rest, has no momentum, momentum in any direction, all the y momentum, all the vertical momentum is in this guy. And so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So m1, v1, or we actually know the values. Well, we don't know the values. We know the value m, and we know the velocity 0.41 meters per second. So that's equal to our py initial. All right, so we've set up for what, uh, what momenta do we know initially. Now, in the after picture, uh, let's see. We do know, uh, let's see, that the momentum P sigma at the uh, after collision, the total momentum in the y direction, it, there's going to be two objects, right? This one's moving upwards, and this one's moving upwards, so we call them uh, positive y momentum. And so uh, we'll call it MV, this is our V2 uh, two final that we're trying to find, right? So MV2 final. And uh, as you notice, since this is going up and to the left, we need to find out this component of that guy's velocity. And so over here, I'm going to draw it like this. I'm going to say V2 final in the y direction, right? And in order to do that with the trig, we know this side of the triangle. All right, actually, we don't. We just know that that's the overall V. And, uh, and it's also moving to the left. So that's going to be our V2 final y. This is V2 final. Now, this is the key to this problem is that because the object is moving up and to the left, it has upward momentum and it has leftward momentum. Keep that in mind. But before we go there, uh, what we could say here, the, the P, um, Y, the, the momentum in the Y direction from this guy, is going to be its mass, uh, and I'll call this V2 final in the Y, all right, because that's the, that's the one we're interested in. And of course, uh, and really when you keep in mind, this is just an expression of how much momentum 
does the second object have plus how much momentum does the first object have, right? That equals the total momentum, okay? So we, since we know momentum is mv, that's why we can write it like that. Now this guy, fortunately we know a little bit more about the first uh, puck, all right? We know that its, uh, its mass is a certain mass m, and its velocity is uh, 0.34, but keep in mind that velocity is in the up and to the right direction. So we're gonna have to use our trig again to find the component of that velocity. And since we're interested in the y direction, this would be the, um, the, uh, the side here. And it gets a little tricky with the trig, but if you come back to your original angle of 37, and we're interested in this one, our y direction, we're actually gonna want that as cosine because you see this is the adjacent side. All right, so we're gonna use the cosine for the y, which I know in, in my class, we don't know, uh, you know, we originally learned y sine, uh, but here, because of the trig, the way it works, if we know this vector and we have this angle that makes our, v, our vy in this case, it makes it related to adjacent. And so by our trig rules, we actually have to use cosine of that angle 37 degrees. Okay, so that's in the y direction. Now, if you notice, this is the sigma py after, this is the sigma py before. And as you can imagine, we're gonna set them equal to each other because that's always the strategy for these momentum problems is set the total momentum before in a particular direction equal the total momentum after in that particular direction. Now, the interesting thing about this problem, let's go ahead, I'm gonna just move this up here and I'm gonna say m uh, 0.41 meters per second equals m v uh, two final y plus m 0.34 cosine of 37. What you'll notice, some of you are jumping out of your seat to do this, watch, boom, 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 since the masses of the two pucks are equal and there's a mass term in every term in this equation, you can go ahead and cancel that out. So this gets real simple real fast. All right, we have this guy and we have V2 final Y uh, plus, and then we can go ahead and simplify that on our calculator. So 0 0.340 cosine of 37. Make sure you're in degree mode before you do that. Uh, 0.2715, subtract that from both sides. This is where I kick in the afterburners on the algebra, but you guys can hang with me. And uh, V2 final Y, as I run off the screen here, I'm gonna help you out a little bit, going in this way. V2 final Y, it turns out is 0.41 minus 0.2753. That's gonna be 0.138, now that's good enough. And so that is our final velocity in the y direction, it would be in meters per second. Now at this point you might be saying, okay, well we have the, the, the y component of the velocity, the problem needs me to find the overall speed and direction, okay? So how is that gonna get me there? Well, keep in mind our triangle right here. What we've just accomplished is we say, okay, well I know this side of that triangle is 0.138. All right, I know that side is 0.138. So watch this, this is our approach. If we can find out this guy, I should label this as x, and I should label this as y. If I can find out this x component of my velocity of the deflected puck, then I am almost there. I'm, I'm golden because I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You'll see how that works out here in just a moment. So let me scoot you up a bit here. I don't want to get rid of the problem too far away. But we're going to take a look at the horizontal direction. So in the horizontal direction before, we had zero momentum. That was this expression right here. We had zero initial um, horizontal momentum. All right. And so uh, what we're going to do here is say, I know that has to be zero before. It must be zero after. And so on the after side, do this, uh, sigma px, that would be a result of this guy's moved to the left and this guy's going to the right. And we know that the leftward momentum of puck two must be equal opposite the, left, the rightward momentum of puck one because they must add back up to zero to maintain that conservation law there. So uh, how do we write this expression? Well, of course, it'd be px of puck two plus px of puck one. And of course, we know p is equal to m times v. So m times, I'm going to write it as v2 final x, right? It's just mv, and all this is subscripts. So don't think I'm inventing new equations here. I'm just organizing which velocity we're talking about, uh, plus m. Uh, and this one, it turns out we do know all of this stuff. We know the velocity is 0 0.340 meters per second. And in this case, you see we're looking for this, what we typically call horizontal piece. You see it's the opposite side in our trig. And so since it's opposite over hypotenuse, we would use the sine of that angle 
37 degrees. All right. Now, and we knew this is zero, right? Because look, we go all the way back here. Px was equal to zero. Okay, so if that's equal to zero, what we can do here, do a little, uh, do a little algebra. So we're gonna, the, um, let's see. Oh, the masses. What do we do with the masses in this case? Uh, well, if we go ahead, zero doesn't have any mass with it. But if we go ahead and subtract this, m v two final x equals, and then go ahead and plug all this in here. So 0 0.340 sine of 37. Now keep in mind this is kind of a common sense thing. Um, I could go ahead and say okay this guy's positive, this guy has negative, and it's actually going to work out great because we know that puck 2 should have negative horizontal momentum since it's moving to the left. That's traditionally a negative direction. And so I'm totally fine with that being negative there. All right and so as we uh, as we put this guy in we would have m times 0.2046 all right, and you see the masses. Oh, look at that. The masses cancel, and we see that our V2FX is equal to negative 0.2046. In other words, this guy right here, this has a value of 0.2046. So if you had some doubts at the beginning of this problem as to where we were going with this, well, this is the, this is the money right here. That's the good stuff. And I just realized my face is in front of this. Let me move my face a little bit. There we go. Some of you were anxious the whole time. If I can figure out the components of the velocity of this guy, right? I have the VFY, I have the VFX. Now it's just a little bit of trig to solve this problem to finish it up. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this picture down here real quick so that I can zoom in and you can see the fine details of this beautiful problem. All right, I know these are, are my components of velocity, and the problem was asking for speed and direction. So I move down a little bit further. I'm going to zoom in on this sucker. Get a nice high def physics. Only the best for you guys. And so, uh, so the hypotenuse here, we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that would look like 0 0.2046 squared plus 0 0.138 squared equals c squared. Go ahead and do all your algebra. So I'll take a moment here. Boom, boom, boom. Add that guy. Square everything. Don't forget to take the square root, and it turns out that our CR hypotenuse, in fact, I'll write it as V because it's our overall velocity vector, is 0.247 meters per second. Now, since the question asks uh, to find the speed and the direction, we also need to figure out the direction. What's the angle that it's directed at? Of course, it'd be this angle right here. Right um, now. When you want this angle and you have these two sides, this is your opposite, this is your adjacent. So Katoa takes us to tangent. And so to get this angle, we can do the inverse tangent of the opposite, the 0 0.2046, over the adjacent, 0 0.138. Go ahead and drop that in our calculator. Again, make sure you're in degree mode so you don't mess anything up there. And it looks like we have an angle of 56 degrees. So that would be our final answer to that problem to find the direction and the speed of our puck. Now, uh, this 56 degrees, depending on you know what textbook you're putting it in or what test you're taking, uh, you want to make sure you follow whatever convention they have. Uh, so in this case, since it's 56 degrees is this angle, uh, somebody, some textbooks might call this 56 degrees east of north, which kind of makes me want to throw up a little bit. But uh, that's how I've seen it in ours. So I'm just going to say east of north. Um, if you're saying, well, okay, if you don't like that, what else do you like? You know, we could always do 56 plus 90 and stick with our counterclockwise from East um, convention. But uh, that's how you solve a two-dimensional problem. And you can see that we would have gotten this real messy math if we didn't just go for the vector components of velocity. Velocity is a vector. Y'all have a nice day.